Welcome to our electron line. To continue getting a good feel what a divergence is, we have another simple example. In this case, we have a vector field that has both an x and a y component. Now, when you draw this vector field, you can see that the magnitude of the vector field is always towards the origin from all directions. And again, we're going to draw or take a small little box from that vector field expand it over here and then take a look and see we realize that the flux again the flux is kind of like if you think of the arrows of the vector field as being fluid flowing the larger the arrow the longer the arrow the more fluid is flowing the, the shorter the less fluid you can see that going into the box at the top end you have longer arrows than you have at the bottom end coming out so you can see that if you think of that as flux and influx of fluid, there's more fluid going into the box that's coming out of the box. So we can say that the flux in is not equal to the flux out, and so therefore the divergence will not be equal to zero. And since the flux out is less than the flux in, we can expect that the divergence of that vector field will be smaller than zero, less than zero, or a negative quantity. So when we actually calculate the divergence, which is defined as being the partial with respect to x of the x component of the vector field plus the partial derivative with respect to y of the y component of the vector field plus the partial derivative with respect to z of the z component of the vector field. And then if we put in the x, the y, and the z component, there's your x component, there's your y component, the z component is zero. Notice you get minus one, minus one, which is a minus two. As we predicted, we get a negative divergence. Now, one more thing we should note. Notice that it's a constant number, which means it really didn't matter where we picked a box. In all circumstances, we're always going to get a negative 2. The reason for that is, that means that the change in the vector field is a linear change. So if you make a change in the position anywhere along the vector field, you'll see that no matter where, from where to where you change, if you change the same amount in the same direction, you will get the same change in the vector field. So therefore, we can say the divergence is constant for all values of x and y, so that we know then that the change in the vector field is a linear change. We're going to show you some examples where the change in the vector field is not linear, and then you'll notice that the divergence will not be a constant number, but actually will be a function of x and y. So we'll see some examples of that. But again, here you can see that if the flux out is less than the flux in, as if flux is being absorbed, fluid is being absorbed, then you know that the divergence will be a negative quantity. And that's how we know what we mean by a divergence.